Here we go. This is the trailer for Living World Season 4, Episode 2, A Bug in the System. Here is the new trailer, guys. Welcome, crew members, to another great day in Lab Alpha 1-9, creating yesterday's tomorrows today. <laughs> Bad news. Zero idea where the base is. But I did find the name of a scientist there. So, if we find the scientist, we find the base Joko's using to launch his attacks. One of their convoys just received an unusual order to delay their arrival. Taking their place should get you inside. The commander leading me around in chains? Uh-uh. Not a chance. <laughs> One grumpy guardian! A ferocious feline fighter! And the commander is decoy, new mastery, new legendary dagger, new map, new story. Where's my longbow, arena net? Scarlet. So we're infiltrating this lab. Something in a cage? Something's- oh, they're like security monitors. <laughs> Picture Joko. Oh, 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 no, it moved. It moved. Ah, there's a bug. There's a bug. No, <laughs> no praise, Joko. Oh, I wasn't expecting it to be a, a male singer of Fear Not This Night. Oh, very nice. I knew that that was in there, but I didn't I didn't know it was going to be that. I like that. Welcome, crew members, to another great day in Lab Alpha 19 It's not a picture. It's a, uh... Bad news. Zero idea where the base is. It's like a camera to watch you. So, if we find the scientist, we find the base Joko's using to launch his attacks. They confirmed on Twitter that's actually McLean Deemer singing. Really? That's amazing! Man with a plan. Jeez. Uh-uh. Not a chance. Okay, so this is their uh their plan to get inside, I guess. So there's there's a I'm surprised they told us that the, it's the legendary dagger in the trailer, but that's a good thing because some that's a lot of times that's uh, what gets people back into the game is those rewards, things to go for, so I think that was very smart to, to announce the legendary, uh, in the trailer. So we're going into this, like, creepy laboratory, apparently, like, of the scientist that's, uh, helping Joko. It seems to me here like there's like experiments being done. This is crazy creepy, man. Look at that! What is that? Is that an Awakened? Are those Awakened? This is, uh, like Five Nights at Freddy's meets... <laughs> ah, that's creepy! That's creepy! <laughs> this is like... This is, this is like, I got like Five Nights at Freddy's vibes, uh, I got like, <laughs> I don't know why, but the painting, like, remind, like, uh, gave me, um, uh, <laughs> like Luigi's Mansion vibes. <laughs> oh man, that's creepy. Okay. Something that bothers me a little bit in these trailers, um, if, if, if I had to so nitpick something, um, is there's very often cinematics in the trailers that aren't in the episode, like, at all. Like, the scene is in the episode, or the line of dialogue is in the episode, 
but the cinematic, like you see it in the trailer, isn't. And this is something that they they uh, kind of confirmed with with some behind the scenes guild chats and stuff uh, for Path of Fire was uh, they wanted it to be um, less cinematics and more in the environment, like you're in control of your character. <clears throat> and I can respect that from a game design decision, um, but personally, I am all about the cinematics. We, we spend 99.9999% of our time in the game, in the game, controlling our character. So having an extra, you know, 20 second cinematic is not going to me, is not going to shatter my immersion. If anything, for me, it makes me connect with the story more. Cinematics make me uh, connect with the characters more because you get to see more animated facial expressions. You get to see angles that you don't normally see. You get to get closer to the characters um, than, than you otherwise would you know, when you're in the environment. Um, what I know when I'm in the environment controlling, anytime I have control of my character and there's bad guys around, I have to always be ready, right? I have to always be ready for the bad guy's gonna attack, I'm gonna have to do something. You know, suddenly the dialogue is gonna be, the, the action is gonna be happening up there and I have to go up a staircase or whatever. Um, and uh, for me, like, when I'm always at the ready to do something, like I'm in control, I can't take 100% of my my enjoyment and, and just sit back, relax, and watch what's going on and, and enjoy what's going on. I have to be ready as a player. Um, so that's just I I just I just felt like I wanted to go on that little bit of little bit of a rant there. This is really cool. I really like this. You know what they that they added this to the trailer. Like I said, super props to the cinematics team. Um, throwing new uh, new things into the trailer. Um, they even kind of like it, it almost looks like uh, when they do those freeze frames. It looks like it's almost like a like a line drawing, like a concept art. Um, very well done. Very well done there. Um, the dagger itself doesn't look super crazy, like, impressive awesome to me. Um, but I don't really use daggers. I only really use them on my Asura and Thief, which I barely play. So, dagger's not super exciting to me. Uh, huge shout out and, uh, and congrats to anybody who was desperately waiting for the dagger. Um, I'm of course waiting for the longbow and the greatsword. We've only got a couple left and those are two of them. I know the greatsword's gonna be last and that's fine. So I keep hoping for, come on longbow, come on longbow. I uh, can't wait to see that. Um, but yeah, like I said, really glad they, they put that in the trailer. Um, so this is all gonna be about like going into some creepy, uh, creepy uh, lab. Like there's all this like drippy goo and stuff. Uh, I'm, I'm excited to see what that's all about. and. and Hopefully meet this scientist that's like working for Joko. This is really cool. Um, uh, no, no sign of like Krakatoric in the trailer. Um, it seems you know obviously uh, Joko is the immediate threat to Corteria. So um, you know we're uh, uh, you know that that's what we're our characters are prioritizing. Um, so. Yeah, um, I like it. I like it. Wonder where this is, though. It looks all underground. That's cool. I'm excited. All right. I wanted to get all my thoughts out in in a singular stream of thought um, <laughs> before I went to and then my eyes go bouncing around chat. So. Um, uh, so let's see what you guys think. What do you guys think of this trailer? I know joke. Yep, the, the picture moves. The picture mo moves at the end. Um, oh, absolutely. The legendary always has bonus shinies. Absolutely. <clears throat> I'm surprised Mike Z didn't use a bug in the system in his delay message. <laughs> that would have been pretty cool. We've, we've discovered a bug in the system. It was all planned. It was all planned. Man, this is... This is really cool. This version of Fear Not This Night is amazing. I want a full version. 
<laughs> so what did you guys think? You want the lab to be in the Isles of Janthir? I, I, I'm, I, the new maps have got to continue to be in, like, either East End or, like, you know, down, down in Alona, right? I, I wouldn't think that they would go hopping all over the map, because Joko's based in, in, you know, the Crystal Desert, right? Or, or in Alona. <clears throat> The dagger is the claw of Connor. Look at the four gems. Oh. The cyberpunk horror at the end song reminds me of the trailer song of Transformers 5. How can you rant on a spoiler, then watch a spoiler for the next story? No, I always watch the trailers. Some people don't even watch trailers. Some people don't want to know anything. I'm not one of those people. I'll watch a trailer. And then I'll talk about everything that's in the trailer. Hey, Wyvern! See, I guess you could tell from here... I don't know if it looks like they're in the desert. It could be the desert. It could be Tyria. I don't know. What's the new mastery gonna be? Where's the new map gonna be? That's cool. This is where it goes creepy! Oh, it's an ancient char artifact. And we, we see like a, like a dead char. Were, were there, um... Were there people laying on the ground there? Or what is that? What are those right there? It almost looks like a Sura. No? I oh no, maybe it's just like little rocks? I, I can't tell what that is. Look at this place. Look at the magic going through here. This is probably just like a representation of like energy. It's, it's the same like graphics that they use for like ley lines or bloodstone magic. Um, it's gold. I'm guessing that this is just that this is just like, you know, kind of like just a flavor. It doesn't really like mean anything. I wouldn't. Although there's a lot of it. There's a lot of that gold energy. This right here reminds me of Five Nights at Freddy's. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, McLean Deemer sang Fear Not This Night. That is awesome. Is that inside the Asura City near East End? I have no idea. Maybe Bram will stop being grumpy. Yeah, I hope everybody's not, uh, uh, anybody's not turned off by, like, you know, obviously Bram and Rox are gonna be, you know, we're gonna be infiltrating the base with them. Um, I'm, I'm all for Bram. I'm not, like, a Bram hater. Um, so, um, I mean, he's a guardian. He's a fellow dragon hunter, man. And he, he proved he's a dragon. He's a full-on dragon hunter last, uh, last episode, and he saved us. So, no, I'm, 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 I'm not in love with Bram, but I definitely don't dislike him. Um, so, and, and I'm excited that we get to go on an adventure with Rox, because Rox definitely doesn't get enough screen time, so. <clears throat> The Claw of Connor was the thing that they were looking for in order to broker peace, a, a, a truce with the humans in Char. Well, there you go. And then we, so we saw a little Asura using it. <laughs> uh, no, that's cool. Awesome. It's kind of like how they used uh, the, the sword was the shining blade. I like that. Makes me wonder what the longbow could be. <laughs> hey, Foxy. I freaked out that dead char looked like rocks. I, I don't think it was rocks. Um, cause I, of course I thought that at first too, but no, that's not rocks. That, that's a male char, I'm pretty sure. So, no, that's not rocks. That, that's creepy though, what the heck? And the creepy, the, uh, other creepy thing is that that's, uh, that's, uh, our player character in the background. This is the, the season four representation of our player character in the background there. So it looks like... We're behind like a like a barrier, and uh, our characters like looking in. Like maybe this uh, this char was like trapped in a cage and like experimented on, or maybe like tortured for information or something. And we're like going through here and you know trying to uh, to find out what happened and you know apparently find this this scientist. <clears throat> hey, champ. <laughs> Love the style of this trailer. It's good. It's good. Uh, 
Um, you think this energy is, uh, is ley line in season two, episode two had that kind of energy from the volcanoes. I think this red energy means a great concentration of ley line. Ley line magic is blue. Bloodstone magic is red. This is a... Like a gold. I don't- I don't- I don't think it's representat representative of anything specific. I think it's just energy flowing through. Maybe it's jo representation of like Joko's influence, Joko's energy. Um, I don't remember ever seeing that gold color. It's- it's the same, like I said, the same graphics that they use for ley lines and such. This just looks like a- like a, um, like, like in the sewers, like underneath, like we sneak, we sneak into the lab, like through the sewers or something. But then, but then why would they need, like, we're like pretending that Ram, Bram and Rox are, are like prisoners. So. Everyone's saying Bram ate my food. <laughs> yeah, this was, this was a, uh. Phenomenal trailer. Arena John, have a great day. This 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 trailer is great. The cinematics team, I mean, give our kudos to them. They are they are rocking it. We become evil. Those gold lines are what we ride to different spots as part of the mastery build. Calling it you oh, you're saying that the mastery is gonna be that you can control golems. Um And so you're saying we maybe the maybe that has to do with the mastery. Maybe the mastery means like we can use those that energy. The the masteries have been very uh, like map specific, which the ones in season three also were pretty map specific. So it's understandable. But uh, but you can't discount that maybe they're gonna give us something that translates to the rest of the game, uh, like the uh, the Lake Doric mastery. Uh, was actually the Spectral Agony down skill, and now any time- if once you get that, anywhere you are in the game, you go down, you have that fifth down skill. So, like, stuff like that's pretty cool. I understand they can't do that every time. Um, it'd be cool if they could, like, if the mastery had to do with, uh, giving, like, one of our mounts a different ability, um, in one of the maps. I think that would be pretty cool. They could be, uh, experimenting with the char. The power goes into cells, they die until one mutates and wreaks havoc. But if there's awakened, unless unless they are capturing people and killing them in order to make them awakened, I mean, we haven't seen any, like, awakened char. Because um, that's how Joko's minions work, right? People die, and I think whether they pledge themselves to Joko or not, they become awakened. So, he can, like, raise the dead, right? Um, so maybe it's some kind of... Maybe it's some kind of, like, uh... Maybe he's trying to... Not only make more Awakened, but maybe, like, mutate Awakened or something? Like, make the Awakened stronger? Like, hey, we've, uh... Because, I mean, look at the last, um... Uh, the last current event, uh, all of the minions were coming out of, uh, the portals throughout Tyria, right? That was the current event, was to stop the Awakened. Well, maybe they're sending these waves of minions, and they're like, hmm, there's all of these heroes who are just wiping out the minions, our minion, the, the Awakened are too weak, uh, so we have to do experiments on them to make them stronger. And maybe they're, maybe they're taking, maybe that's like, maybe that gold energy is like life energy from the living and they put that energy into the dead or something like that. It could be, yeah, oh, I like it. When it. If it's like twisted like that, I would love that. That'd be awesome. <clears throat> yeah, and that, uh, there's like this drippy goo mud stuff, um... Uh, all over the, uh, uh, the lab. So it could be something like, you know, like I said, they're, they're trying to mutate them and maybe sometimes it goes wrong and, um, and, and so then they, I don't know, they explode and there's all this drippy goo everywhere. <laughs> I think it's going to be like failed experiments and stuff, you know? Hmm. <clears throat> 
There's a ritual to make them awakened. Someone dead or to awaken him. I don't think there's any restriction on what race can be awakened, except that historically Vabi was all human until recently. There's an NPC that was awakening people. I guess Joker doesn't have to be there to make awakened. Is it the volatile magic? Oh, that's right! Oh! I forgot about that. No, Eric, you're totally right. I forgot about that. At the end of episode one, they did mention the scarab plague, which makes a bug in the system uh, a lot scarier. I totally forgot about that. Yes. Um, Timey said at the end of episode one that she, when she was, you know, captured by Joko, she heard that they were working on something with bugs. And throughout the episode, we heard of the Scarab Plague, uh, you know, which is uh, something that wiped out, you know, people in Alona a long time ago. Um, and uh, yeah, so um, this this also, we didn't see like a bunch of bugs, but um, we, that's something maybe we could see. I mean, I don't know how the Scarab Plague works exactly, um, but Definitely. We do know. That's right. We do know for a fact that they're trying to create the Scarab Plague again. Forgot about that. Hey, Dead and Cold. Hmm. Um. Could Joko make Silvari into Awakened? I don't know. I don't know. I would think so. Because Silvari are immune to dragon corruption. That doesn't mean they're immune to being risen as undead. Joko's not a dragon. He doesn't use dragon magic. So I bet he, I bet Silvari could be raised as undead. Or uh, awakened. Yeah, a bug in a system like a scarab. Ah, didn't even make that connection. Totally forgot about the scarab plague. <laughs> I think Joko is the bug in the system. You got it. You got it. That sewer, every time I see that, I, I keep thinking different things. I, I think that sewer is like, I love that subtle movement. Um... The sewer could be, like, the failed experiments, whatever they're doing. I still think it could be something like they're trying to make... They're trying to evolve the Awakened. They're trying to, to modify them. They're trying to make them stronger. Because, like I said, you know, we keep wiping them out. So, hey, we got to make the Awakened stronger. Um, and then maybe those are, like, the failed experiments. Their bodies are plants, Bjorn, and we don't know what happens to Silvari after they die, right? Bad news. Zero idea where the base is. Why are the Silvari still immune? We've seen undead destroyers. Why not undead Silvari? Um, hmm. I don't know. That's a good question. By the way, FPS Monkey, I had waffles again this morning. I think I've had a waffle every other day. <laughs> <laughs> Since I got that waffle maker. <laughs> because Primordus is absorbing Zaitan's magic and adding it to his own, but Morty is dead, so the Safari's link to them is severed. Um. Waffles! Uh, right. Primord when a dragon dies, the other dragons get a little bit of their magic, a little bit of their abilities, so it's, um... Zaitan didn't like raise the destroyer. Zaitan's gone, but his mad his death magic is in Pri uh, Primordus. So Primordus can now create, you know, fire slash death magic uh, destroyers. That's why we see the 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 mix of the two. Um. The Inquest have managed to modify corrupted creatures and create other creatures that have more than one form of dragon corruption. <clears throat> yeah, the, who knows what the Inquest is capable of, right? And I, I think I think this episode is going to go into some more, you know, Inquest abilities, plus whatever resources Joko brings to them. <laughs> Team Pancake. <clears throat> Um, 
No, I don't think we've seen Risen corrupted by one of the other dragons. Because the other dragons aren't concerned with ore. All of the... The Risen are in ore, right? And we have, like, the other dragons aren't in ore. They're not concerned with that. That was, like, Zaitan's territory, I think. Uh, we do die and find Silvari in... It's not necessarily the underworld. It's that, that in-between place, and that does bring a lot of questions, and we could theorize that on that forever, but... Um, and we did, back with the Path of Fire story. Um, but that's not... That's like a limbo. Uh, the Domain of the Lost in the Path of Fire story is a limbo. It's not like the after-after life. You go there, you get judged, and then you move on to either the Underworld or like wherever you're supposed to go. Um, and yes, we do see Silvari in that limbo, so I guess that proves that Silvari go to that limbo. We don't know if they can go to the Underworld after that. We, we haven't yet seen... We've been to the Underworld, right? In the new raid. Uh, and we haven't seen, um, uh, we have not seen, um, Silvari there. Or, or any other, um, anybody but humans. Uh, because even when we go there in the raid, I, I think even Glenna says, like, you know, I'm glad I'm not gonna come here when I die. So that, you know, the, the Asura have different belief system. In the trailer, they seem to be following a pipe, and it's full of pipes. I mean, yeah, that that's true. Um, that's why I think it's, like, underground and hidden. And then we're gonna... This, this informant is going to, uh, you know, he knows how to get in there. And Ty... Because Timey says... Uh, let's listen to what Timey says. She says, like... Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. You know, she says... Uh, like, we found the head scientist, and so we just have to find his lab, and we'll find where the minions are coming from. Lab Alpha 1-9. So, if we find the scientist, we find the base Joko's using to launch his attacks. One of their convoys just received an unusual order to delay their arrival. Taking their place should get you inside. The commander leading me around. So they, um. Uh uh. Not a chance. She found the name of a scientist that is in. They know that they're coming from that lab, but they don't know where the lab is. Timey finds the name of a scientist who works at that lab, so then they use that lead to find where the lab is. Okay. <laughs> um, and yeah, as far as this being like an extension of uh, like the, the Asura personal story uh, storyline, um, I'm not really fami familiar with, with any of them. Um, like once upon a time, I either played them or watched a lore video on them, but I don't know any details off the top of my head. Um, so that would be amazing if they continue some of those storylines. Uh, kind of the same thing they did in Season 3 with the human storyline. A lot of the stuff, a lot of the characters came back from the human personal story. Um, so if this is going to be a little bit more, uh, start being more Asura-centric, bring back some of the Asura personal storyline, uh, maybe utilize, you know, items or experiments or things from the Asuran storyline, I think that would be amazing. Um, of course, Season 2 was also Asura heavy as well, because obviously the Eternal Alchemy, um, you know, Omad's Machine, and, you know, every, actually everything. The, the Asuran technology uh, has been, and knowledge has been very integral to pretty much everything we've done. Um, I'm sad the human stuff is over, because the humans are my favorite, but, um, yeah. Maybe, uh, maybe this is a subtle hint. Uh, could we definitely see some char... Uh, you know, the dagger, we have the dead char there. Um, maybe this is a subtle hint that we're gonna start going towards, uh, char history and start seeing some of the char stuff. Poor Norn. <laughs> you had to sneakily watch it, Happy. How you doing? Do you think the Silvari singing is from the other tree? No, no, that, that's just for flavor. 
like I said, they, they do things, they put cinematic angles and stuff and, and mix, uh, mix, um, uh, like, dialogue and stuff in the trailer that's not necessarily, you know, exactly how it happens in the actual episode. Like I said, we, we always see tons of cinematics uh, in, in the trailers that aren't in the actual episode, which makes me very sad, but that's just how they're doing it, and the trailers are phenomenal. Um, so, uh, do I think this creepy version of Fear Not This Night is like, it's Malik or something? No. Is it a possibility? Yes. Yes, it is a possibility. I, I will. I'm totally open to that. Um, but it is a little strange. I'll give you that. It is a little strange to, to hear Fear Not This Night, um, in this context, but I, I, I truly think it was just done for cre the creepy factor, the, the spooky factor, the wow factor in the trailer. Um, yeah, I, I, I think it's just for the trailer.